All right. Hello, all three of us. Woo! Party I think time. It's me, you, and Chris, if he's still on here. Uh, let's see. Happy birthday. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, I don't know how many people we're going to have in here, but odds are it's probably not going to be a lot. That's all right. We got, to, uh, we got the UK. We got um, yeah. what, Australia. Right. Uh, it's a good time to um, branch out, I guess. Yeah, and we got a lot of people uh, that will probably watch this on on uh, replay. Yeah. So. Right. Right, then I'll get some work done. Drink some beers. You get your stuff ready. Get all, uh, get all your shipping done. Yep. I've got um, – here's all the things right here that I need to get out. Um, right. I'll go through those. And for those of you who do not know in the chat or who's watching this on replay, I am going to be going to Utah to go on vacation with Josie and her family, my girlfriend Josie. And my flight leaves in just a couple hours. Not a couple, but uh, we're going to have to leave here in a couple hours to get to Raleigh. It's about an hour drive. So for right now, we're just going to be, um, okay. Hey, Tracy, thanks for listening in. I know you usually stay up late. Um, but yeah, this is the big ticket item that I sold. This is a Spunkmeyer cookie oven. Spunkmeyer? And, yep. So they make like muffins and cookies and whatnot. And I sold that for $199 and they paid... I think it was forty nine ninety nine shipping, about 40, 40 or fifty. So really good, uh, really good item for me to sell. Uh, I bought this. Well, actually, it's kind of an interesting <clears throat> story. I got this from a, a barn that I cleaned out, which I never posted any footage from. Unfortunately, I've had that happen a lot. But um, cleaned out this guy's barn. He had a post on Facebook Marketplace saying that he had a whole barn he had to clean out, and that it was stuff from his flea marketing days. And I guess he'd been doing flea marketing for about 40, 30 or 40 years. Um, and he was just getting ready to retire and move away and sell the property and whatnot. So I picked up everything from him. Uh, I didn't clean the whole barn out. He kept some stuff. And then I just got to the point where before I had my second trailer, I just didn't have a lot of room. Anyway, I paid $600 for everything. And that's where I got all those, uh, the majority, vast majority, probably 80, 90% 80, of all those records that I have at the flea market. And that's just been rolling, rolling money in. Nice. Um, but yeah, this just chipped away at that. I had another, as you, funny you said the hot dog thing. I actually had, this was sitting in there wrapped in uh, a uh, bed sheet. And then on top of it was another hot dog maker that was wrapped in a bed sheet. Right. And I sold that one for 149 and they paid shipping on that. So this is going to be pretty interesting to package. I got three different big size boxes. Might double do it. I don't know. Um, I got these boxes free in a dumpster behind uh, a Ross, I believe. Yes, right. it was. It was a Ross um, clothing outlet. Is that stainless steel on that Spunkmeyer? Uh, oh, yeah. This is this is a uh, – I think knew this thing was about $500. $500. Yeah. So what are you intending to do? Are you going to wrap that first and then stick it in a box and then put that box in another box or what, how are you going to do that? I'll probably wrap it with some uh, big go. bubble wrap. I might put it in a box, wrap that box of bubble wrap. Yeah. I was thinking go. at least do like do the bubble wrap thing that you said and then just cut some scrap, um, uh, scrap cardboard just for the corners. Well, you know what? This might be a good time to utilize – you got some scrap laying around just to oh, kind of give it a buffer when you put it in a box. I got one uh, one better. This is from whenever we uh, got in our new Snap-on toolboxes. Oh, there you go. Perfect. So Perfect. right here. Uh, yeah, it's it's going to be kind of – well, I do have a cutoff saw, a cutoff wheel. Yeah. Um, so I can just go cut that real quick. Put that in the corners. And, yeah, I'm actually glad you said that. That gave me that yeah. – that idea to do that. So, yeah, that's in the shipment, that cardboard's going to scratch the shit out of that stainless steel. Well, you know. yeah, it's already got its fair amount of scratches and it's got two little dents right here. Oh, okay. Um, but you are correct about uh, bracing up the corners. So, yeah, that way yeah. 
it'll be yeah, good. Do that. But then, I, of course, I'm going to have to compensate for the thickness. I mean, this thing is yeah. it's like three quarters, yeah. or it's like a half inch, or yeah, it's exactly a half inch. Um, so I think we got 19 inches right here. Can you beat that? Uh, I, I can't compete with that, bro. <laughs> I got. I only have a little measuring tape. Oh, okay. <laughs> but no, we, so we got a half inch on each. Uh, it'll be half inch added to each uh, diameter. Mm. Um, so we're looking at 20 inches in total. Woo! Um, let's see. And this box right here is actually exactly 20 inches. Uh, well, 20 inches both. So this maybe you can make. Maybe you can make some other corner pieces with some other cardboard that will snugly fit because that that piece would be great for your corners but it's too thick yeah oh it'll be 20 with the with the corners. Right, it, oh it, okay there you in go theory, it should work perfectly yeah. and you so, could probably get away with just cutting pieces brandon of that yeah that's corner, the plan the corner piece not just the whole length of it though so yeah. you would need like eight pieces or you know four for the bottom four for the top if it's going to be a snug fit so it's looking like the for the whole thing it's nine inches yeah uh, <laughs> oh my goodness. We're not starting that again. Um, oh shoot. And hey, I'm going to uh, say hi to a few people in the chat, Brandon. Hold on a second. Oh, yeah, of course. Of course. Oh, Georgina, uh, rolling with stones. Go ahead. Yeah. Secular flipping. Tracy over there at, uh, over there in Texas. You've got uh, the rolling with the stones. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Star City Picker. How are you now? They want some cookies, Brandon, with your Schmuckmeyer. Oh, that's I hear you. Be, that's going to be your new nickname. The cookie? Sch Schmuckmeyer. Georgina, good morning to you, darling. Mm -hmm. He's having a private chat. He's giving a period of instruction right now. Well, it's just, he's like the Bob Ross of packing. That's right. So I am going to be shipping this thing out and I have to be, for those of you that just came in, I have a flight to catch in a couple hours. I'm pulling an all-nighter. I got 10 or 12 things to ship out. Got a couple other things to do around the house, but for now we're just going to hang out and y'all are going to watch me ship this big item. So, all right. yeah, it looks like this will be enough. Um, I think this is at... See, I got this. This is 40 inches, so I think, yeah, it's it's more than enough. It's more than enough. All I need to do is cut about, it, like you were saying, it doesn't have to be the whole length. Yeah, it doesn't have to be the whole length of each corner, dude. I would just do, like, use utilize that. It, it, I was about to say, it's not how long it is, Brandon. It's how you use it. That's what I heard. What do you have to say about that, Georgina? <laughs> I would just cut, like, eight little pieces off just enough to utilize it all and it, it'll work it, it's going to be a snug fit in the box yeah i'm gonna have to go uh i'm gonna have to go and get my uh either get my saw or just go out there to the garage cut it real quick come back yeah i'll entertain but yeah. ghostbusters cassette look how sh look how clean that is it's about a 15 to 20 dollar cassette tape right there oh yeah Man, that's nice of them. I find, this I'm going to. Uh, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Uh, no, no, I was just showing it for those that are going. Oh, those are really cool. I would probably would have picked those up too. The soundtracks uh, for a lot of different media typically do well, from what yeah. I understand. But uh, Georgina, I'm going to. Um, you've probably heard of Salt Lake City, Utah. I'm going very close to there, but um, up in the mountains from there. That's where Josie's family uh, lives, and. And I'm uh, going to be doing some skiing and some uh, some other outdoor activities. And I don't know why you just don't tell them the truth. Man. Why you gotta lie? Yeah. You're afraid? Are you ashamed? Are you embarrassed? I don't know. I don't know if it's appropriate. You know, with me representing the armed forces of the United States, I don't know if I can talk about that. But okay, I'll just let you. I'll I'll let you discuss it on, on your own time when you have time and you feel comfortable yeah well 
Well, go cut your piece of cardboard, dude. I'll entertain. Oh, hey, hey Greg, sunny. we got Sunny. I'll go cut it in a second. Let's see. Um, I'm going to go over real quick. Uh, since we got some people rolling in, I will go yeah. over the other things that I sold. All right. Let's do it. Um, well, first of all, since we, everyone's here, uh, as most of y'all know, it was my birthday. And I don't know why he's not in here. Matt. Matthew. What's up? Come here. Matthew was kind enough to give me the best gift that money can buy for my birthday. So I'm a big fan of Star Wars and a big fan of Lego. And this just happens to be the biggest Lego set that was ever released by so Lego. Cool. And it's the Millennium Falcon. Wow. Yeah, this thing is, you can't even, like most, from this distance, you can't even tell it's Lego. Holy crap. Like it's, it's so detailed. That's crazy. This thing has like, was it 8,500 pieces? So, I think it's in the 7,000s. Oh, it's 7,000. I don't know. Who put, who put that together? He did. Wow. He come in, come into the... Yeah, this thing is super cool. There's a lot more little things about it. They're just like, I mean, it's, it's the collector's edition. It, like I said, it's the biggest Lego set that's ever came out. Yeah, it got the plaque, right? Yeah, it's got that little plaque with it, and it's got all the minifigures inside. It's got all the different rooms that you see on the movies uh, in there, and like, uh, it's got like both the guns. It's like you can take those off, you can see the people in there. Wow. Super cool. Super cool. A lot of detail. You need to hang that thing up so that's the plan. Yeah. yeah. That's I got a whole plan for it. And I got other uh, Lego and Star Wars things spread out. Yeah. Um, so I'm planning on making like one of these walls uh, like black and then with like stars and whatnot and have it hanging and then yeah. have like TIE fighters following it and shooting at it. I nice. think it'd be pretty cool. But, and I'm uh, probably going to put some LED lights in the back of it because it has the, uh, um, has like the, the blue uh, stream. That's true. There you go. It's like a translucent uh, tube. That's very cool. Oh, they said hey, cool. in the chat. To you? To you? To you. But yeah, so that thing is really cool. Figured I'd show that off. Um, but he's such a sweetheart. I got a little hard. Earn my, oh, yeah. To earn my key. <laughs> and then here are some of the other items. I will go through those a little bit and y'all can see what has sold. Uh, some of these are on Josie's account, some of these are on mine. And I have to put that, I have to put the accounts on vacation mode. right now um i'll i'll show everyone the uh so am i gonna feed the snake when you're gone uh snakes don't have to eat that often technically mm -hmm. i can I, i'm gonna feed her right now technically i could have not fed her for two or three months and she would have been fine oh she would have lost a little bit of of uh fast fat storage and she probably wouldn't have felt that great but snakes can technically the only reason she wouldn't feel good is because she's been so used to a a weekly feeding Right. Snakes, snakes cannot eat for, um, I think the record for one was like a year and a half. Wow. Yeah. Um, so anyway, back to the sales. All right, right here you got the uh, a lot of two CDs. Let's see. These are like a first, let's see, volume one and volume two of these. Uh, I think these are gospel. Yeah, these are gospel CDs, and it's volume one, volume two. I have like 18 or 20 set, 18, 19, 20 sets of these. It's got 16 right there, but I have more left over for the for like a buffer in case I need to return any or you could have just went around. Anyway, one second. Sorry, Like this way? I'm sorry. It's all right. Um, yeah, pet snakes are uh, like they're just very just bulletproof. Like they're pretty resilient. Um, what do you mean it's not enough? Yeah, I was just sitting there as like increasing well, uh, the handling okay. time. Disregard when I said vacation mode. I'm, I'm literally going to take it off. So there's like an option so that your items are not available. 
So that's what I'm going to do. Yeah, there anyway, you go. Because I'm not stress free, don't want to have to worry about it. Whatever. Uh, anyway, I got, I got these in that clean out as well that I was talking about. Um, the one that I got the uh, cookie maker out of. And there was, like I said, 20 of them in a box. And this is actually an interesting thing. Uh, some, like, I think only one of these had ever sold. Like it was like one of these that had sold. And it sold really cheap. And so technically, if you would have looked at sold comps, you would have probably not have like wanted to buy it if you were somewhere, you know. Um, I don't think you need to change handling if you literally make your store not visible because no one can buy anything. And even if I did, uh, yeah, because they can't, they, they, you can refuse to accept purchases. Yeah, you, I can go ahead and jump in. Only thing that the, they can do is send you uh, send you messages, unless they change that since like eight months ago when I went on leave last. But uh, yeah, so tip, typically, if you would have saw this in the store, you probably wouldn't have bought it. Um, I just thought for a second that maybe uh, I don't know. I, I can't remember what my thought process was. What? But I did post these, and I've sold I think three sets of these so far. Which one? I can't see it. What's 14, up? 12 you got for them? Yeah, I got 12 free shipping. They're going to go medium mail. I'll probably spend like three bucks medium mail. Yeah. And at the end of the day, I made seven bucks. And yeah, I've got. And it's, it's something that now we kind of look at. I mean, we, not all music media or CDs, but we kind of overlook them. If, <clears> if <throat> I, well, the thing is, I didn't, I didn't pick this out. Like, I already right. had, like, I bought the whole lot. So I was like, you know, it's like, whatever. I, I, I figured. I didn't really care because it was so easy to post. They're brand new. They're sealed. There's not much to worry about them not working or anything like that. I don't have to test them. Super easy just to sit up. Boom. Quantity, you know, 17 or it was like 19. Um, and then put them in a box, set them on a shelf. Nice. Right. Super easy. Um, <laughs> and, it, and it's already paid off. For the t time I put in, you know, I've probably made 15, 20 bucks. Uh, there you go. Can't complain. I sit there and spent three, four, four minutes tops. Um, let's see. Next, this uh, movie got this in the storage unit, and not very impressive. Two fifty, but they did pay shipping. But I mean, I just posted it. I I used the uh, stock photo, so really hardly any time was used uh, on that. Let's see. Well, we got these. Of course, I always sell these decals. This is a uh, sticky or a sticker one. This is a reflective sticker. West Virginia University. I sold that for seven ninety nine. Um, after uh, after shipping and everything, I you know make four or five bucks off of it. So, but I've got a lot of quantity. I think I only had one of those, but I have the West Virginia University and the yellow and blue. I've got like ten of those. So, let's see. Moving on. Let's see. Alrighty then. Up next, I got this uh, Jefferson Nichols yeah. uh, folder. It's not full, though. It just has like uh, three or four. What years? It has uh, 39, 47, and 49. You, have, you put that in the posting? Yep. Mm. 35 is the year you need to pay attention to. Yeah. I Other looked them that, up. Technically, you know? yeah. I did look them up, and they weren't like too crazy. I mean, you can even tell right here how many were produced, and it was – like 39 was 120 million and that was the most produced out of literally any of them. And then actually, yeah, all of them were, all the three that I have were the most produced. That's why they're still in the book. <laughs> oh yeah. There's some more. And yeah. you know what? I didn't even include those other ones. Oh, take, like, them. take them out and send them to me. I'll keep them. Maybe I didn't. Huh. How much you get for that? Trying to look. I got, uh, I think I set, oh, I did include them. Disregard. So $6 and they paid shipping. There you go. It's whatever. Yeah. Easy to post and didn't take too, too long. Let's see, one of them fell out and I got to. What's up, big Ricky Justin? Welcome to the chat. Hey, buddy. 
Just missed it. Hey, I learned something very valuable about Justin today. Oh, yeah? His wife is a teacher. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, a Spanish teacher. Oh, okay. Maybe she can teach you. Uh, no, I'm just kidding. I don't know if you've seen his last video, but it's hilarious. No, I've been super busy. Trying oh, to get ready. That guy. That guy is something else. What's up, Four Eyed Hustler? Hey, Four Eyed Hustler. Let's see, who is that? <clears throat> Four Eyed Hustler. I think it's one of the first times you've been in the live chat, huh? Yeah, it's the first time I've ever seen him. Um, let's see, next. I got these uh, Ice Pop. Uh, this is a retail arbitrage. Uh, fine. I paid. Uh, these were on like super duper clearance after like I think it was like last Christmas. So that right. I've had it for that long. Bought them for like twenty five cents a piece, and now I'm selling all four of them for fourteen ninety nine. Nice. Yeah. Y'all kill me when you get these st things for like less than a dollar. Yeah, and it's and I like it because it's they're brand new and it's right. I and mean, not much work goes into it. I don't clean them or anything. Right. Uh, I'll go ahead and go on to this one. Uh, Say uh, Chicago Blackhawks uh, metal license plate frame, thirteen twenty nine. TSG sent four eyed hustler to you. What is that? Okay, yeah, I'm lagging in the lagging in the chat. So. But uh, but yeah, welcome anyway though. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for coming in. Oh, there he is. What's up, G's? What's up, Chris? What's uh, up, Chris? But yeah, this is uh, Chicago Blackhawks mm -hmm. sold for thirteen twenty nine. This usually ships about seven or eight ounces in a padded uh, flat rate. Oh, so, yeah, there you go. Yeah, I mean, I make about seven or eight bucks off of these, and I've got about 200 of them left. So, Let's see. Next, got these women's uh, ASICs. These ones didn't sell for that much. Uh, that's whatever, though. $19.99. Um, and the buyer paid shipping. So I forgot how to, how to pack these, um, kind of a bigger size, size 10 for woman. That is, uh, so yeah, there's that, uh, let's see, moving over to Josie's channel or channel. I say that every time Josie's, uh, eBay sold. She posted a couple of these emblems on her account, and oh, I forgot. I have one more thing I do have to go out there and get. That's hers. It's the uh, it's that book. Yeah, I sold uh, let's see, Notre Dame uh, Fighting Irish uh, metal decal. Sold that for eight ninety nine, free shipping. And same thing with this. Uh, is it tarpons? Some people say tarpons. Tarpons. Terrapins. Anyway, the Maryland mascot. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. But anyway, um, and then I have one more thing. This is a uh, this is a pasta maker. Um, it hasn't been paid for yet, so I don't know what's going to happen with that, especially with me getting on a plane in a couple hours. I don't know what's going to go on with that. But either way, they paid. No way I accidentally put free shipping on that. Mm -mm -mm. That was an accident because this thing's literally going to be about that. Well, there you go. But since they haven't paid in two or three days, I can technically cancel it, right? Um, what is your buy it now policy? Not sure. I think it's four. I think eBay gives them four days. But just saying, even if I don't, I can still cancel it and for non-payment. I can still cancel it in general. Yeah, but I think uh, that might cost uh, a ding towards your matrix for that. I'm gonna yeah. click this, but I'm not gonna. I know it's gonna give me an option. What's your what's your percentile for defect rate? What's your what's your number? Do you? I don't have hardly anything that's. Um, well, if it's not going to affect the the bottom line because there's a minimum threshold that you shouldn't cross, 
or you lose your, your power seller on eBay? Something was wrong with the buyer's shipping address. Yeah, I got to pay for it. <laughs> Is that what it says? Hey, that's an option. Or the buyer asked to cancel items in this order. You could send a message to the buyer to get around that and avoid getting uh, a ding and to say, hey, it's approaching the third day. I was just curious if you're interested in paying for it. If not, I'm going to cancel the order. Yeah. And then ask them to cancel it if you can. Yeah, I might do that. Um, it's looking like that might be the plan. Uh, let's see. You got the uh, – that is the only other thing. A manual for small block Chevys. And I don't have it here. I got to go out into the garage and get that. So. Justin says that my brain, it looks like that my brain's hurting. Tired? Yeah, it's been a long day, man. I got a package. Piece of crap up. No, Georgina, they hadn't paid. No, yet. they haven't paid. It's, no. it's, uh, even, if they had paid and it was just my fault, I'd just accept the loss and, and uh, move on. But now that I'm about to leave in a couple hours and uh, I messed up the shipping and uh, I won't be here to package it. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm uh, I mean, I could prepackage it and have my buddy send it out. Oh no, I just. I'd rather just cancel it, as I think most people would. But uh, we'll see. Oh no, uh, still have to keep moving forward and get this cut so that we can get this thing packaged. Uh, my AFSC is um, two alpha zero five one X one M five one M because I'm of my uh, classification. But uh, I work avionic systems for the F 15s Quite hustler. Were you in? He had to be for asking the AFC. If he said the Air Force the Special, AFC, Dakota, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna cancel, uh, Georgina. I'll send a. I'll tell you what. I'll send a message just to show that I did. And since it's so late, they're probably not going to get enough time to respond. Um, but, you know, I'm sure that's not exactly the right thing to do morally. But at this point, I don't really have an option in case that, and I mean, unless they do respond within the time that I, before I leave. What time is it, by the way? How long have we been on here? Oh, only 30 minutes. I got time. Plenty of time. So I'll go cut that. You keep everyone um, entertained and in check. Hmm. So I will try my best. Yep. I'm get me a drink. More caffeine. I think I'm going to need another beer. Uh, let's see. All right, Chris. We'll see you later, bro. Take care. I wish you were on here. You could do your 98, 7 point whatever, 98.7 jazz. <laughs> you got the smoothest voice on YouTube. Bro. Uh, no chair in here. Am I a mute? <laughs> Matt, what are you doing, Matt? Enough. Take over the show, Matt. I'm just eating his food. Yeah? You're eating his food? Yeah, apparently uh, there's another guy staying with me. I'm sure you've seen him. Yeah, the uh, it's part of like the agreement that he buys all the food for him. That's what he was saying, like right before he left. He's like, "Oh, I gotta go buy him some food." Oh, so Brandon yeah. buys the food for the roommate. Yeah, nice. I think that's weird. So <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I would be coming home with a loaf of bread and a bottle of water and go, "Here you go, dude." There's yeah, I know. This, this should. We'll see how long this lasts. Yeah, I don't know. Um, 
Well, I took all the food from my last place and I just bought some more. So now I feel more comfortable taking his food knowing that I'm contributing. Yeah, there you go. Like the pool. And I just think that's a stupid arrangement. I'm not going to be here for that long anyway. But hey, You're fixing to go where now after this? Oh, I... You know, uh, Air Force people, like, when they first get in and, you know, and they're, like, single and unmarried, they're forced to stay in these dorms. Yeah. And uh, oh, I've just been in there there for long enough, you know, reach the end of the line. Like, oh, yeah, uh, go go find somewhere else to live. Huh. I say, okay. And, wow, that's uh, messed up. <laughs> well, they just run out of space or you just ran out of time? Uh, more ran out of time. And so... Uh, but luckily, you know, he said I could stay with him for a little bit, and that, that's nice. So, what's your plan then? I never, I never even heard such a thing. Why would they even do that? You're still stationed there, right? Oh yeah, I'm still stationed. Well, now, now I'm going to get a, a living allowance. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, but basically. single? Are, we, are you getting married though? No, I'm not getting married. At least not so time. the Air Force allows their single airmen to move out into town. And they flip part of the rent or whatever you're going to be paying for your you get a, rate. Yeah, you're now, um, they now give you like a housing allowance. Yeah, what rate are you though? What rank? Uh, E3. Yeah. So uh, you're an E3 living out in town. You know, in the Marine Corps, they would not allow such a no. thing to happen because they we definitely can't don't. control ourselves. They got to keep us corralled on base in case we decide to get naked and. Try to steal a Humvee or something. You just stay in the barracks your entire time. Well, I mean, we're, no, we don't have to stay there, but to live there, I mean, they they try to keep all the single service members in the military, at least in the Marine Corps, on base until they get married. No matter what rank you are, you'll either be given housing on base or you'll be given an allowance to live off the base. But if you're single, your your ass is stuck inside the barracks. Oh, that's, that sounds terrible. It's terrible. How much space do you have? What's that? How much space do you have in there? Well, it'd be just like living in a dorm. But it's a two. When I was stationed in Hawaii, it was a two-man room, and then we just shared the heads with the with the uh, rooms next door. So it was two two rooms side by side. Funny enough, you know, each of you had your own bunks and your lockers, and then you shared a sink and. No, nah, that's, that's not how it is, and uh, therefore, so I mean, there's there's rare occasions that that's the case. But a lot of times it's you have yeah if you're like deployed or something yeah you have like your own room and yeah. if anything you share a bathroom but I mean I, I there's there's one like a lot of them have their own kitchens and yeah um or well that's not so much at Seymour Johnson uh, that was at Kadena there's a few different yeah the quads no no a lot of them like there was like a single ones and they it was literally like a, a little little uh mini apartment yeah and you had like a shared kitchen or something no you had the same you had your kitchen oh wow, that's cool yeah. I don't know. I just uh, I had my own room. I didn't have a kitchen. I had some like communal kitchen, and uh, I shared a bathroom with a guy. I never met him. He never met him once. Yeah. As well. yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I didn't get here. I didn't get my own room until I got promoted to E five. E five. Oh. It's like that's a sergeant. Yeah. It's a sergeant in theirs, and then we call it staff sergeant. And you were like you got. You were probably like three years in by that time. Oh, he's What's probably that? You were like three or four years in by that. Oh, I got promoted to sergeant four years in. Yeah. Wow. I should have been promoted to. Uh, I should have got staff sergeant like two years ago. But I, I, got promoted, I. I got promoted so fast when I got in. I was sergeant for uh, my second whole term for four years. Wow. The first time I was eligible, I got in trouble. So I got doc. I, I wasn't allowed to test. Um, and then the second time, I chose not to test. And that's kind of like a little stubborn. Eh, I I don't know. I had I had a, a pretty salty taste in my mouth after my divorce and some other things that happened in the shop with my last base. Um, had a salty taste in my pipe, my mouth for the military and was like, screw this, I'm getting out. And I, hated everything about it and so i literally said you know they, they uh they always talk everything up about testing and they're always like oh you but you can't wait to test with staff sergeant so you can get more money and so my rebellious self i literally was just like 
F you, I'm going to decide not to test. I'm, I'm not saying that that, you know, I, I don't regret it because I do. And I was, it was a very immature thing for me to do, but that's just where I was at in my life. Right. I'm very cynical about life. Well, how many people can say they've done that? <laughs> I mean, that's true. Or even like met somebody. I've, I've never met anyone that done that. Yeah. I told my first sergeant that when the first time I met her. No, I owned up for my mistake. I didn't hide it behind anyone. I told him I, how I felt about it and that I, I feel different about it now. Unless you're trying to hide that first. Or no, that's, I mean, when people have, well, I mean, when I first said it, I was trying to hide it because of the people that were directly above me at the time, and um, I knew that they'd make my life hell, but they got out of the military, so. But anyway, that's a whole other topic. So they're out? That's a whole other topic. Uh, so, yeah. Oh, look at that. Look at those emojis. Oh, yeah, that, um, that box was not big enough. So, I didn't account for the handle. Can you take the handle off? I technically could, but... Or does that door come off? It, it doesn't come off in an easy way. <laughs> I gotcha. And and I'm not trying to get make people, you know, inconvenience or whatever. I, it, honestly, FedEx doesn't really go so much off of the the, the dimensions as long as they, they don't break a certain, like, cap. Hey, tell Justin the name of this apparatus that you're boxing up. A foobar or what? What's it called again? It's a cookie maker. No, what's the name of it that you gave it? Oh, Spunkmeyer. <laughs> Sp it's an Otis Spunkmeyer cookie oven. That's almost as bad as Orville Redenbacher Spunkmeyer. Yeah, I mean you've seen them before, right? Like you've seen I have. I mean, it looks like one of the. Uh, it looks like one of those uh, ovens, not a microwave, but one of those, not a conventional one, but. Like a toaster oven. Is that what it is? I don't know, but he got 200 bucks for the thing, Just. No, it's not a computer. It's a glorified toaster with a window inside. Oh, look at the little cookies inside, mommy. So how are we going to do this? Let's let's try this. That's a $200 piece right there he got. Huh? What's he paying for that? Anyway. Ready? What would you say? How much was that? How much did you pay for that? Uh, well, yeah, I got. Remember, I got it from that uh, that lot, that place I was cleaning out, that barn. Oh, okay. that's right, that's right. The guy that was a flea market uh, entrepreneur. Yep. Actually, you know what? We got the space now. I can't. I'm not gonna do it like that. That's too. These are very, very stiff, and I don't want them to do anything to that glass. So we're gonna wrap it first. How many swings, Justin, do you think it would take with Big Rick? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good question. That's yeah. a very good question. I'm sure he would have some fun with that one. Maybe it's him buying it just so he could, he could uh, do it. Uh, I think he said, Justin, it was going to be shipped for about $49. Well, that's how much they paid. I'm going to have to see how much I can try to... Mango. And I know that this is probably not the smartest thing to do, but I always overcalculate um, shipping. I mean, I'm not saying that's not the smart thing to do, but a lot of people do the exact opposite. Not the exact opposite, but they try to make it as cheap for the buyer as possible so that, um, you know, it's more marketable, right? You know, because you have less price that they're going to have to pay up front. Uh, I guess I look at it a little bit differently because mm. I've had a lot. I ship, I like big items. Like, I have no problem shipping big items. Yeah, I think big items are a good seller. I, I always look at getting bigger items. I don't care about the cost, I'll factor it in somehow. I almost sent out a, um, uh, it was the international roll or roll international vending machine that I got from Alaskan Airlines. And I put it on eBay, and I got so many questions on it, shipping. And I was like, I will freaking build a freight case, pallet, whatever it takes for me to uh, to get it gone. Uh, I'll put it on the belly of a Greyhound bus. I don't care. 
and um, I was gonna get good money for it, but I ended up trading it for some scooters. Oh yeah. Yeah, I like I don't know. It, honestly, it it's fun for me as well. Like packing the big items. Yeah. You know, because I I like packing. Um, hey. Justin wants to know if you're going to sell any Girl Scout cookies out of it. He said you should send a brownie mix with it. Well, uh, you know, like I, I think I told you, I was actually wanting to get a concession stand on base anyway. And uh, I started that idea right after I got, you know, like not right after, but after I'd already posted this. And now I'm starting to think like, man, maybe I should have kept some of this stuff. But, uh, yeah. But not a huge deal. I can always, uh, find deals I've got, you know honestly i was on facebook marketplace weirdest thing and uh, i saw the exact model of the hot dog machine that i sold yeah um i remember i used to wanted to have a hot dog cart man i got so much of this paper like it's well actually I'm, i guarantee most of y'all saw uh watch a lot of josh same exact situation that he, he got. Being in the military town, uh, you have people coming all the time, and a lot of times those companies that they hire are used to dealing with government uh, government contracts, which means that a lot of their things, like the amount of money that they pay them to move us is ridiculous. So they wrap this stuff. So I'm just curious, why are you putting all that paper in there? So that all the stuff doesn't slide, slide and slide around and, and hit the glass. Okay, I'm just going. I'm just concerned. What's it to you, bub? I don't know. It hates when to get to its destination, and the guy plugs it in to see if it works. He it on fire, burns his house down, kills his dog, and then all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I hear you. I... I think only Marines would do that. I, I think, you know, this guy was probably Air Force. Well, first of all, a Marine didn't order that damn thing to begin with. He's out okay. back with his, his washer tub and K-bar cooking up his food. You don't need no damn Schmackmeyer or whatever the hell that thing's called. Yeah. <laughs> and he wouldn't spend $200 on a Girl Scout cooking machine. He probably wouldn't. He'd probably just beat his wife and make her do it. There you go. <laughs> all while wearing a wife beater shirt. Oh goodness! I don't. I don't approve of that anyway. So. All right. Well, Justin said he shipped a two hundred pound carjack once from Massachusetts to Florida, cost him one hundred and twenty dollars. How much? One hundred and twenty huh. to ship it. It had to have been like freight, or not freight, but uh, what's it called? Uh, oh shoot, I feel what that ship shipping is called when it's really heavy because uh, UPS, FedEx, and for like the normal like ground shipping, UPS, FedEx, and uh, U uh, USPS, like the max is like 150 pounds, I think. Yeah, and then you go into like the special delivery rates, uh, unless there's something I'm missing, which is entirely. Possible. So, we got grilling. We got grilling in the chat. Hey, buddy. Chilling with the grilling. What's up, grill? How you doing, bud? We're gonna shove this in there. What she said. Do it the other way. I do what I want. Uh, turn it the other way. Why? I don't know. It's the same. It's uh, it's 19 by 19 either way. Yeah, but it doesn't look right like that. Well, I mean, when you get an ASVAB of like 15. I mean... Now, see, that looks better. Whatever. <laughs> you just wanted to see me do that. That was it. You're just amazed by the fact that you did it. Oh my god. There you go. See, that's beautiful, dude. Perfect. They're gonna think that came straight off the boat from China. 
Oh, shoot. Where'd I put the other ones? What'd you you're going to put a little thank you note in there with some red lipstick kisses on it or what? What are you going to do? Yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the reason. You know, thanks for everything you've done. I appreciate it. Love, Brandon. I still think you should throw a, a box of brownie mix in there as a good GP, dog. Oh, yeah? So you, might get, you might get a good feedback on that one. Yeah, that box worked out perfect, though. Yeah, it's, it's looking good. Yeah. It's looking good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. Landshark Clicker's in the house. What's up, Landshark? Thanks for coming in. What's up? I was just commenting Landshark just showed up in the chat. Oh, hey, Craig. Packing some orders. Got a flight in a couple hours, and... Thankfully, I got my buddy here to drop off the packages in the morning. Yeah. Now, I'm just curious. Are you flying commercial or are you flying a Mac flight over there? By any chance? No, no, I'm going commercial. All right. I mean, I guess I could have looked and see if, if they were doing any training, uh, training exercises to heal. Hill Air Force Base and near Salt Lake. Right. Uh, I've been there once. I want to go back. But I think, uh, honestly, I, I really don't want to be at the, at the whim of all that. You know? oh, crap. Are you putting that thing to bed or what, dude? What's up? What, what, what are you putting in there now? Paper. There's a, there's a gap like about. Three or four inches. Oh, okay. It's hard to tell. Okay. I'm going to resize it, but I don't really want to. Well. No, I, it doesn't. And that shit ain't going to weigh much. It's not. Uh, yeah. I want, this is a, a thick box. I'm yeah. going to keep the structure as much as I can. But somebody also said in there you're getting good money for it. So Justin said that. So I agree. Just box this shit up, tape it up, put a label on it, get it ready. Look at that. Beautiful. Suck a wiener, yeah. anyway. It's, yeah, you all you know all about the wieners, dude. That's where my that's why I'm going to Salt Lake. It's for that convention. Yeah. It's a wiener convention over there. Yeah. It's the actually yeah. I'm gonna climb the old mountain and just like whip out your wieners. And roast them. <laughs> <laughs> you ever had your wiener roasted? Uh, there was this time in Singapore, but uh, we don't have time for that one right now. Yeah. I mean, if you were ever one of those uh, those Marines that got uh, they picked the unlucky stick and had to go out on the on the boats, out on the carriers, and I'm sure you. you get a little I, bit I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah okay. And when I ha see, I have a lot of stuff like this. Like if I get boxes that are like just ridiculous, like covered with, with a bunch of tape that's you know branded or or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll uh, I'll typically take oh, good old eBay tape and yeah, go over it. Just go right over it. I don't even know. There's really no, I guess, reason. It's just so that they, I guess, maybe so they know that that's what what this is and it's not something because it does say something like if still is broken or packages damaged contents yeah yeah or signing or whatever yeah and i gotta, yeah. I gotta cover that's that good. that's good good that's good you did a good job dude yeah you know this box would have cost me like whew, it's probably have been like a 10 10 15 dollar box yeah I can't remember the last time I ever bought a box. Oh, screw that. Right. Screw that. I'm uh I'm happy I was able to get this at Ross. I got so a lot know, of the little mic looks good. I just noticed that. Oh the mic, yeah. 
Yeah. So how does it sound? It's on the intercom. Uh, yeah, when you cut up to it, it sounded like you were whispering sweet nothings in my ear. Oh, don't get me started. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Started. Um, let's see. All right, we got a couple more here. We got Fat Girl Sewing that just came in the chat. Hello, hello, hello. All right. So let me ask you, how are you going to weigh that? Just to see how much it's going to weigh. I have a scale. Okay. Um, probably with little brass weights and a a little bit of a teeter action scale. You want to know how I would do that if it was me? Um, go ahead. I would get the bathroom scale. <laughs> oh yeah. Now this thing is a. Uh, this thing's alright. Okay. Yeah, I need to get a. I need to get a better scale. I got the one that eBay gave to me for free, but it's a piece of shit. All right. Yeah, no, and this I've had this one for a year, and I've I mean I've never had any complaints. It tears really well. Um, yeah, I'm happy with it. Let's see. Uh, all right, so we got got all the Josies done. No, I haven't. I literally this is the first one I did because I know that this one's going to take uh, a while. Yeah, well, you did that pretty good. You did that in about twenty minutes. All the while, talking smack. Yeah. All right. I, I guess I can't show all this, can I? No, I wouldn't. But I guess we'll just, uh, I'll verbally uh, narrate it. Let's see. How much? Do I well, yeah, okay. I was say, let's play a game. Good. No, let's play a game. Let's see how much is gonna how much is gonna weigh and how much is gonna cost. Well, um, I do this and I will continue to do this, and I do not I do not swear by this or I do not say that I'm going to endorse this in any way. Um, but I have not had a problem with it, and I've shipped probably like a thousand items or something so far in this year. But I will as long as it's the same amount of time I will like use whatever service I can as long as it's the same amount of time it has the same amount of tracking so like for instance well this only really applies to things like that are like oversized like this so like if I have like USPS uh, parcel select package right and it'll be about the same time or it almost always is, is faster with FedEx and cheaper I will go with FedEx even though that they are expecting USPS so they get their tracking that it's through FedEx. Right. Um, and Do you always put a message in there saying that due to the due to the choices and faster service, I decided to go with a better carrier? I never do, to be honest with you. And look, I'm looking right now. It says USPS parcel select package, and it doesn't have any insurance included. And then FedEx home delivery has insurance included, and it's cheaper. I'll give you an example. Let's let's actually like see how much this difference this would be. All right, I'm going to say it's 53 pounds. All right, anyone else got a guess? Uh, you said 52 pounds? No, it's not that heavy. It can't be that heavy. Um, I will say that thing probably weighs about 25 pounds. Okay, anyone else? Come on, let's uh, – actually, you know what? I don't know how much of a lag we have. We might have a big lag like we did last time. I don't know. I'm at 25. I know Justin's in there. Justin, Justin's pretty good about this. Hey Jody. Hey, hey Jody. All right. Anyone else got a Okay, actually it's not too far behind. It is behind, but it's not too far behind. Yeah, could have asked me. Why? I could have checked. Oh yeah, I could have. I didn't know you were on there. Yeah, yeah, like smart posts. Um it well, it gives me all the options. Um so I'll use whichever one's available. So Grillin's under twenty five. Justin, you still in here? All right, so Craig's going twenty. Oh, uh, that's how much? How many? Oh, well, we're talking pounds. We're talking yeah. like pounds. We're not talking Joey's, about. Joey's it's at right. twenty nine. So Grilling really doesn't have a number, but he's under. He says he's under twenty five. I've already got the. 
the weight. Anyone else got any uh, any guesses? <laughs> Johnny doesn't even know what's in it. <laughs> Johnny's at twenty nine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I already packed it up. Yeah. Um, Jody, he's, he's, a, go ahead. I was gonna say Jody's gonna get it. It's usually the guy that doesn't know. <laughs> All right, you're at 39, and then um, anyone else? Oh, Justin came in at a high 39. So Justin's high, uh, Greg's 20. I'm in the middle, and Grillin's just – he's going to have to be somewhere in there. Grillin kind of went the easy way. All right, y'all listen to this. If if y'all here, – here's what y'all going to get. I will let you know uh, what Lobster's name was before his sex change. Um, <laughs> and I'll even show a picture. <laughs> Okay. Oh my God. All right. Tracy's at 22. Oh, when I said 50, that's what you were saying. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, all right. Anyone else? Georgina's is at 28. I'm pretty sure I already know who. Well, of course you do. You're staring at the number, ding dong. What you got? Line space is 11 pounds. All right. Uh, who won it? Let's see. Where's he at? I got to make sure I remember his. The suspense is killing me, son. Yeah, I know. All right. Just in time flipping. Won it. It is. Oh, okay. No, Star City Picker actually gave it last. So he actually won. It's uh, 35 pounds and 5.5 ounces. Wow. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to put that into the eBay system update. Let's see what it. So Justin says you're a wimp. You can't pick anything up over 30 pounds, dude. He says he kind of struggled picking it up. He's seen I mean, it. <laughs> well, it's, it's this big. So it's kind of awkward. Like, Hey, hey come on. You got to put right. your legs in it now. Yeah, I always. Uh, We're gonna have to do a replay and go back and see what kind of, kind of uh, mechanical, uh, mechanical technique. Oh yeah, what kind of physically you used? So here we are, thirty-five pounds, five point five ounces, twenty-four point five. Uh, longest length, twenty-one point five inches. Uh, the other length and thirteen inches tall. Um, it is going from Goldsboro, North Carolina, to Tyler, Texas. Hmm. How much do you think it is trying to charge me for USPS parcel select package? Keeping in mind they paid fifty five sixty four, and I fifty five dollars for it. Yeah, you are going to pay forty nine dollars. Yeah, Krillin, it was uh, it was thirty five five point five. Thirty two is actually closer. I think if it would have been point, if it would have been eight ounces, it's five point five ounces. If it would have been eight ounces, saw what you saw. Oh, okay, uh, if it would have been eight ounces, then we would have probably. Yeah, that's a draw right there. That would have been eight ounces. But um, yeah, he won barely. But yeah. anyway, so can't be over. Or, or Bob Barker's gonna come back from the dead. It actually is. USPS parcel select package for that exact dimensions. It's saying it's going to charge me $73.19. Woo, spank my noodle. I, I mean, I, I put it in exactly what it is. I tried yeah. to pack it. You know, I could have broke down a box and tried to be all Frankenstein about it, but like I packed it pretty good and um, was decently modest. I had bigger boxes than this, but I tried to get it right. I like, I like Justin's math. He only lost $3.09 an item. You're losing like twenty some dollars. That's if I would have went with USPS. All right. So which package. carrier are you going to go with? FedEx is going to do it for twenty nine. What? Yep. I every time. Every time. Is that the Saber one? Huh? What you said twenty nine dollars. Yeah. Damn, dude. There you go. Money in the bank. It was, uh, it weighed, how much did it weigh again, Just or Brandon? I will, you know, I'll, I'll be able to do this so that y'all can see. 
but you are not going to be able to see their um grill and i'm sure he saw the prices right when drew carey or uh what's, what's the other guy story? um is it bob barker well bob barker i don't oh, think that was on that was back in the 70s and 80s and, yeah. and into the 90s maybe even further bob barker was around for a while then drew carey stepped in and then uh I don't know if somebody else came in. I, don't know, I lost track. But yeah, so it's it would basically we're at you know, yeah, it's always cheaper. Uh, FedEx home delivery is always cheaper for me, even wow. cheaper than Smart Post. Uh, Smart Post is uh, it doesn't include insurance, and then home delivery does, and it's always cheaper, and it gets there faster. That's another well, thing. How right much here. insurance do you get for that? A <clears throat> hundred, a hundred included, and then USPS. Um, did not include any insurance. Oh, you should increase it up to cover the cost of the item, though, for another hundred dollars. Oh, you think? Yeah. Well, I was just getting down to like the actual like original. Oh, I got you. As to what it would be. I don't think pirate pirate ship can compete with that. Then, do you? No, pirate ship only competes with things that are within the half a cubic foot. Yeah. Anything else that's like eBay's always cheaper. So. Well, there you go. Cookie maker shipped to Texas, $29. Yep, so I'm going to go with, let's see, FedEx Home. Richard Dawson. Wasn't that Family Feud? Richard Dawson. He was Family Feud, right? He was the womanizer guy. No, that was the guy from the Gong Show and Bob Barker. All right, I think Richard Dawson is the Family Feud guy, wasn't he? Grilling. I don't know. If Tommy was here, Tommy could tell us. Tommy knows everything. All right. Um, I'm going to have to send you a uh, link as to where the drop off for FedEx is because it's not a FedEx uh, store. It's like a just drop off location. Sharp. Mm -hmm. Wait, what's going on? I'm going to have to send you. I'm going to have to show you where. <laughs> Matt doesn't know what's going on yet. Hey, Matt, while you're there, you get an oil change and get your tires rotated, too. You might get lucky if it's a Wednesday. Oh, actually, you'll be doing it tomorrow. So they give away free ice cream on Wednesday. Who gives away free things? Joe. Did you see what I added to the checklist? You didn't answer. Okay. You, I always get you. I didn't get you that time. Oh... No, I didn't see what you added to the checklist. I'll go look though. And then we're just going to go with some basic shipping practices with these other items. So what's, uh, what are you up to, lobster? Just listening to some music and drinking some beers. No listing? No, I'm not going to do it today. It's been a long day. It's been grueling. There's a lot of shit going on in my life that I just kind of just want to soak in for a bit and make, I got to, I got to make some decisions here and it's going to change a lot of things. So. Yeah. It's causing a lot of issues. Well, I wish the best for you. Yeah. Yeah. I want to try to stay out of the headlines. So I'm just kind of, Chilling. Chilling like a villain. Uh, penicillin. Yeah. You hear the dog and the cat fighting. The cat's going to win, dude. <laughs> the cat is just evil. He mm -hmm. just attacks out of nowhere. He'll he'll sit, sit places and, and just attack out of nowhere. Didn't actually use this one, so now I gotta cut it back down. <sighs> Did I put 
link to the chat? Or did I post a link to StreamYard again? I think I did. Uh, yeah, and I was hoping that Sonny was going to jump in, or Tracy, or Grillin, or yeah, somebody, wants to anybody. They want to just jump in. I don't know. Uh, I could have Matthew dance. <laughs> Go ahead. What time do I have to be there? I don't know. What do you want me to say? Since you've been... Oh, well, your flight leaves at 4.30. No, it does not. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. Okay, it leaves at 4.30. Then why... <laughs> if you're worried about me saying that, then why did you just ask about it? Because it leaves at 4.30. Okay, whatever. Hey, um... Well, I can't really answer your question if you're... Matthew may or may not have told somebody the wrong time. Oh, it wasn't the wrong time. It was 4.30. It's always been 4.30. And, and when I say somebody, I'm talking about our leadership because he's supposed to be at work right now. <laughs> but he got off to be able to take me to the airport. They, they would have said, uh, like, go home anyway. Your night shift. They don't care. Skinner's back. So. Oh, well. She don't need uh, Her Jeep overheated. So. And that's always something with her room. Well, she hasn't been back in like two weeks. I said I missed her, and then she just like, no, you didn't. <laughs> like, yes, I, yes, I did. I really did. So Sonny said he would have jumped in, but he had to go wash his butt crack, and he's laying down right now because he's a wuss, and he'll just do it next time, which is a lie. I hear you. <laughs> That was reading it as I saw it, and in between the lines, brother boy. I just missed everything. No problem, brother. No problem. Anytime. Yeah, I can put this damn thing. Yeah, oh, there we go. Like a glove. What do you want to say? You want to say something? You can do an eighth inch drawer, right? Isn't that one of the things? Like a glove, yeah. yeah. It basically repeats all the same jokes. Well, wait, wait, they said that they that you need to dance. Okay. Kind of dancing there. Yeah. Lobster can yeah. beat for you. <laughs> we, need, we need a show, Matthew. Right. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh oh, here he goes. That's pretty good. I took this how many hours? Good. How many hours did that take you to learn that, Matthew? I took uh, that. I took this dude to the club for his, his first time, and that, that's what he did right there. I was dressed as a human spider. He was dressed as the human spider. Now, I have a question. Did they teach you that in the Air Force in basic training? No, I've been doing this like as long as I can remember. I don't know. Where hey, I'm is that a vintage Daffy Duck shirt that you got on? I don't know. if it's No. Really oh, wait, you got that at the store, didn't you? Uh, Aaron was out of picture. Yeah, well, like that's that's the sleeve. Sleeve. it's single stitched or not. No, it's it's double. Oh, I like it. What'd you get for like a couple, like a couple bucks? Oh, no, you got for free. free. That's right. You stole it from the thrift store? No, 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 no. They have a free thrift store on base. Oh, there you go. No, I, I'm not allowed to get, buy anything there and resell it. Well, no, not to know. <laughs> Matthew, we are live. I miss... I miss the uh, yeah yeah you're live remember that I miss being on the base and getting taking advantage of some of the deals that they used to have especially with the cars. Yeah, I almost bought a car from there, but I didn't fit into it. Yeah, I used to love that when I was stationed in Kaneohe, and Sunny can probably relate to this. The the cars were the thing, the island cars, and anytime anybody got shipped out, they'd want to sell their car really cheap, and I'd be there hand. That's how old they Yeah. And then that's where a lot of them went. They either go back to the mainland or they go out to Okinawa. But I'd be there with money in hand. And I always told my gunnery, I was like, hey, I'm leaving. I'm going to church. And church was a liquor store. And then right next door was the car lot. I'd be driving the car right there to the car lot, waiting for the boys to get their paychecks to sell them a car. Did you a 10? 10 what? Orders? Uh, I think there was like 10 or 12 altogether between mine and Joe's. 
Uh, yeah. But <laughs> splits and trippery. It's the uh, Air Force training. You know, it's funny. I could probably go get it too. Um, my my grandfather was was in the Marine Corps uh, as well, and uh, he sent me a letter while I was in basic training, and was just completely just roasting me. Like he was saying, like I bet you get up at ten a.m. and do your lap around the around the mess hall, and then have your oh here's Krillin. I don't know how long he's been there, but here he is. Krillin, what's up, bud? How long you been there? A couple minutes. Okay, my bad. I, I get to uh, to cut up what I'm doing. So good. Yeah, I'll just we have my cat. Oh, look at that! Look at that puss. That's a black puss. I got a black puss too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh shit! He's got a tiger puss too, and a black one. Got got two. Two. I got a gray and a black. Come on. I give them nice. these treats. You know they love. This is like crack cocaine for them. This is uh, <laughs> temptations. I wouldn't got guy, some of that friends. Temptations uh, catnip. Yeah, but he's always stealing it. This guy, I got. This is Tilly, and this is Blackie. Uh. Come on, go take over. What's the matter with? Yes, yeah, Sonny. Kinda... I I used to do that too, Sonny. Hanging out with the locals. It was hard for me, though, when I was there because I was the substance abuse counselor. So I gave out your analysis trying to pop people for smoking weed. And I was always hanging out with the uh, the the locals and they were smoking their pacalolo. So you, 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 were, you were in Okinawa? No, uh, I never I went to Okinawa. Brandon's oh, okay. was in Okinawa. Okay. How, how, how was it a long time ago? I mean, well, you're a kid, so it couldn't have been that long. Yeah, uh, no, I was uh, there for three years, and I, I got here to Seymour Johnson Air Force Base in North Carolina a year ago. So, uh huh. Yeah. Where are you from originally? West Virginia. Oh, West Virginia. Okay. So, so you're 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 a lifer then. I mean, I'm in five years. Uh, so you yeah. might as well. You know, you know. So let me five percent so, done. So, what does that mean? So, people who like, if a guy tells you that they did like thirteen years. And they didn't finish the twenty. Does that mean they did something wrong? No, I did uh, eight. I got uh, out. It did, it doesn't always mean that. No, I got out. I got out after eight years. I just said I'm done. After my second so, tour, I was done. You so, were in the Navy. Long no, time. in the Marines. Same thing. Oh, <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> and now, what? And what, Brandon? What are you in? Uh, Air right. Force. He's in the, He's Air, in the Force. Air Force. Oh, so those are the, the smarter kids. Yeah, they're right. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to uh, go over there and steal your fucking tires off your F-15, dude. Don't upset him. <laughs> <laughs> gonna so what were you doing in the Marines? So what, what, what possessed you to go into the Marines? Um, A guy in a very sharp uniform approached me and said, what are you doing with your life? And I said, right now, nothing. He says, how? To drink this beer. <laughs> yeah, they uh, want to travel the world and see women. I said, yes, sir. Sign me up. Yeah. You know, always have have the yeah. Well, at the thrift store, you know, at, uh, at my, you, you, you spend a lot of time at the thrift store, Lobster, or no? Yeah, it's, uh, I go to the Goodwill. Okay, we have uh, around by us. We have um, Savers. Yeah, that's one of the busier thrift stores that people like. There's like it's one of the only ones that it's real busy and people camp out there like all day. Right. So we we you know we wait there like you know and there's one guy Ronnie and he was in the Marines and he was actually in uh, he can't when you say he has a California or Nevada phone number, something like that. I don't know wh where the base was because you said you're in San Diego, but isn't that? Mm -hmm. But that's not because of the military that you're in San Diego. No, I got out in '98. Uh, I was my last duty station was here. I never went home. I had nothing in '98, and I. But yeah, cause I thought the Navy was in San Diego. Isn't that where the Navy is? Not anymore. Well, they got bases over here, but they're training. 
uh, is no longer here. Yeah, there's not there's very small Navy operations that still go on there, but they're very I thought small. Camp Pen, Pen, Pendleton? Pendleton? That's yeah, that's a Marine, Marine base. base. That's a base. That's oh, a that, Marine base. Oh, I thought that was Navy. No, that's all that's all Marine. Oh, okay. It's a huge base. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. I thought it was I thought that was the naval uh, the West Coast naval uh, spot, but I guess not. That base is like six hundred square miles. It's ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, so this guy Ronnie, he's always uh you know, he's he's like a hust like you know, he does everything like he's neurotic with everything. Doesn't seem like you're neurotic with anything. Lots. No. But he's, oh, yeah. he's like he the way he sets up his stuff and the way he runs out for the merchandise. You know, I try to help him out once in a while, give him a ride here, give him a ride here, but he he's not right. You know, he was in Iraq for a while. Yeah. He's not he's not well, you know. So I, I you know, I try to help him out when I can. Give him, you know, because this guy, he's riding his bike in 20-degree weather to go to the thrift store just to try to find some Legos and some TI-83s, <laughs> you know. But this guy, he can't work a regular, a straight job. He's he's like, he's like, <laughs> hey, Sonny said that in Las Vegas that nobody camps out at the Sabres unless they What happened? The, the savers that they have in Las Vegas for for people that camp out, he says, don't nobody camp at savers here unless they're homeless. No, no, no. This is in New York. Not yeah. It's just when he had yeah, because I'm sure when they open the door, there's probably a man rush to get in. Yeah. It's, savers, it's a good savers, you know. Uh, he, and I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's one of the better thrift stores, even with... Ten guys there, yeah. you know, waiting, and and we all nobody really fights each other, but but it's very it can get competitive, you know, when right. when a good rack comes out, people are you know, especially you know the like you know a lot of people go for that jewelry, you know, they want to find they're looking to get one of those jewelry jars, right, and open it up and find you know a gold necklace in there or something like that or silk or something that's worth they, you, know. you know they probably go through all that stuff though right before they put I'll it on the tell floor. You what, he finds it once in a while. Wow. Um, and he's not going to show it like he's not going to. He's not going to share it with anybody. It show that he got it right. He keeps it on the. On the he's not going to lie and say, "Oh, I just found this." These silver rings in there. Yeah. If he didn't find it, because right, why right. would he show it? If anything, he would say, "Oh man, a dud." Yeah. But I only go for one <laughs> item anyway, so I only go for clothing. So I, to me, it's you know, I'm not gonna run. To me, the video game market and a lot of stuff is so is so saturated. There's so many guys chasing after video games. You know that. Forget about it. I, I right. Like, yeah, unless I get a storage unit that has them in there, I, I typically like. Yeah, I don't look for them either. I don't do yeah, as well. If you, obviously, if you have a locker and then you know, yeah, you, you gotta get rid of it. You find it in a locker, you didn't even know it was there. Yeah, I'm not gonna go purposely out of my way to spend money on that shit. It's too much of it. Unless it's like get, they're like giving it away, pretty much. Right. Yeah, but they no money giving them away anymore. The video game is that market is, you know. You know, the, 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 that the, used to be one of my tricks uh, when I would go to the swap meets. Is I'd go and find the, I would prey upon the uh, the newcomers and go and buy their video games and DVDs, and I would take them to the video game vendor and then the DVD vendor, and I would flip them and make money because you can get them from the newbies for like less than a dollar if you bundle them together, and then you take them over to the vendors and pop them for two or three bucks. Yeah. I just stick with the clothes. That's it, you know, because I already know what I'm looking for, you know. Right. And and a lot of people don't realize if you buy, if you buy too much different things, too many different items, you spend half your time doing um, research. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I've spent a lot of time on research. Yeah, Between so. selling on Amazon and eBay, I got so much stuff, dude. So yeah. much stuff. But yeah, I know what I like to sell, and I know what I don't like to sell. And then, and then after a while, you don't want to list it because you're like, oh, I don't even want to look at it. Yeah, <laughs> just it gets to that point. And that's why I don't, I don't do electronics anymore. I used to do electronics. You know, electronics, electronics is good if you have a station set up, and you're very that's good at really repairing. Really, really, yeah. yeah, if you're good at repairing electronics and you're good with, 
wiring and this and that, then it then is a tremendous amount of profit in electronics. Yeah, I have a whole shelf behind here that's just full of like vintage stuff that that's just yeah, I got a laptop. I got about a half a dozen laptops that you know, I because what I would do is I'd buy them. Like I have one lady uh, with an estate sale company who she always gives me good prices on things. So sometimes she'll just say, Oh, fill up a box or fill up a bag, 20, give me 20, 30 bucks. And then you just, you know, you like load it up, you know? And then I end up buying, I'm like looking at like remotes and stuff. I'm like, I don't even know what the frick this is for. Why did I buy this? You know, I'm going to waste more time. But, you know, when stuff is free, or, you know, if someone's like, here, excuse me, when someone's like, oh, do you want a laptop for five bucks? It's like, it's hard to turn down a laptop for five dollars. Right? Goddamn <laughs> you know buttons I mean? are worth some money. You know, you can sell the buttons. That's what I'm figuring. I'm like, what should I even do? Oh, you know what? This guy Ronnie was telling me. To, I don't know. Did you did you ever do scrap metal or anything like that? Yeah, I still do it. I just don't show it on my channel. Yeah, this guy uh, Ronnie, uh, you know Ronnie the Marine. He was telling me. Uh, I I haven't looked at the prices or anything, but he says yeah, the the scrap metal like aluminum. He's like it's yeah, it's tiny. Everything. I remember when exactly. like copper and everything and brass, all that stuff was high and people were going around stealing people's like water valves and all kinds of catalytic converters from the cars. Yeah. Crazy. But he was saying, I think it has to do with the coronavirus because they <laughs> supposedly all the factories in China, they're, they're telling people not to come to work because, you know, the, uh, Oh, for the spreading of the virus. Yeah, wow. because they're all working in close. Everybody's working in close quarters over there. You know. Yeah. One guy can get a thousand people sick. You know. Yeah, that's crazy. If you're working, yeah, I haven't been factors. following the stats. I was following it there last week, and I kind of just stepped out of the the realm of following the numbers on that. That's been about three, was it, was it was scrap metal. No, the virus. Okay. This shit's scary, man. I used to yeah, describe that a lot. <clears throat> and that really sounded everything I'm doing. Do you have? I said I used to do uh, scrap metal a lot. Um, oh, really? yeah. Well, now the price, that's the thing. is, like, And I was saying, I knew anecdotally, without looking it up, that the scrap metal was down because I would drive around and I would see an air conditioner in the morning around the corner from my house. Yep. And then and then drive around the same, you know, in that afternoon and it's still there. Yep. Now, that's that, was five, that was five years ago. Somebody would have scooped that up. Yeah. But, you know, now, nowadays, what are they <laughs> going to give you for an air conditioner? Five bucks? Oh my gosh. Oh, no, no. That you'll, they'll consider that. Um, if you just don't touch it, you just throw it in there. Yeah, they hardly have, they'll give you hardly anything. It's uh, it's mixed um, alloy or whatever their that price is. It's like it's like forty cents a pound or something like that. Oh, and then I got into a fight with the guy at Save. It. Well, I was talking to Ronnie about that. I was I, he because I was we were talking about prices, and uh, he's like, "Oh, that's the price if you break it down." I was like, "Well, you really can't break down the air conditioner because, I mean, I have. You have to, well, um, doesn't that when you cut the the white the, the hoses, I mean, doesn't that pollute like the uh, the, the water and the water? Yes, it does. You, you so legally guy, cannot do that. Yeah. So the guy next to us, the eavesdropper, he's like, "Yeah, that's bullshit." He's like, "That doesn't the pollution." He's like, "Oh, it just goes into the atmosphere. You know, atmosphere sucks it in." You know, like, oh, no big deal. Yeah. I was like, bro. I, I'm just going by what they say. Am I? I don't know about the environment. I mean, I'm not a scientist. You're having this, I, I you're having this conversation outside of a Savers? <laughs> well, no, in the Savers. We're all waiting for the new racks to come out. Oh, <laughs> my God. Well, regardless of how people feel about it, it's literally illegal. Like, if you get caught doing it, um, you can you get in trouble. Like, it's it's yeah, not. Most of the guys you see them at the, at the yard, these guys are junkies. These guys, you know, getting busted for that is the last thing they're worried about. They have a crack pipe and they have all junk on them, you know. <laughs> they got more worries about all their, you know, meth or crack cocaine. The same thing with those TVs. They used to bust the end of the TV 
and it'd be shit everywhere. Yeah, you know and, and it closed because you have the uh, it's the CRT cathode ray tube, and the core is copper. Yeah, but these guys would bust it open, and it'd be shit everywhere. I I, I stopped going. I used to go to one yard, and you know, people who don't who've never done this before, or something. I don't know if your yards are much different, but this shit is freaking dangerous there, man. I mean, oh yeah, pull up, go ahead. You're like in the middle. Like I would pull up my truck. And there's really no way to really work and pull your stuff. I mean, you have to have everything ready ahead of time. You know, you pull your stuff out. Everybody is like, no one's looking to give you a hand. And like the guy, I brought these windows, right? The, uh, you know, like the, the aluminum windows, like the house yeah. windows. And the, guy, and the guy's like, oh, you have, you have the glass in there. I'm like, yeah, just give me whatever. You know, I. Yeah, yeah. So he he so he takes like a friggin' metal yeah, door. Smashes and Right in my face, man. He's like, bang, bang. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, what the fuck? That, like, okay, now, now I can give you the 15 cents of pa- 15, yeah, or whatever the yeah. price. Yeah, you got but, that, and then you got the fact that, uh, like, for instance, I, I literally suffered this recently because I, I was still doing this the uh, scrap every once in a while because I'd get storage units with, like, I mean, yeah. I can't remember exactly what I found, but I found, like, a bunch of aluminum, and it was, like, really thick. Uh, cast aluminum and I, I did get like 40 bucks from it but by the end of it i actually popped the hole in my tire in my on my ram and it was a oh, yeah. tire. yeah and that and yeah. then i patched it did it again and then had to patch the other one so i ended up having to buy brand new tires yeah, yeah so you were a loser on go. the deal just driving to the yard yeah, that owns the recycling center owns the tire store right nearby oh yeah <laughs> yeah there's always that's the thing there's the recycling center and there's Right down the block, there's there's a uh, the used tire guy. Yeah. yeah, and they got new too, but they sell a lot of used tires because they have a junkyard, and then they got, you know, they get the used tires from the junkyards. <laughs> but I'm down by. Uh, well, do you know the East Coast at all? Who? You. Uh, as far as like where, I've never been oh. to the Northeast. As far east as uh, Michigan, Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, Georgia, and Florida. Oh, but that is, is that where you're from, Michigan? Uh, I used to live in Michigan, yeah, years ago when I was a kid, up to about the age of 15, and then I moved and moved to Washington. Washington State? Mm-hmm. Oh, shit. Yeah, I've never been to, and, then, and then Japan. No, he was in Japan. You were with- Yeah, Brandon was in Japan. He he was actually born in a basket that floated down the river in in uh, San Juan River, I think it was there in Okinawa. Okay. Uh, he's a he's a bastard. He's a bastard child. Yeah, <laughs> love child. He's a love child from uh, an Okinawan uh, mermaid and a uh, Navy sail uh, sea seaman, right? Wasn't it, Brian? Brian? Is that what you told me? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> yeah, my dad was a seaman. Uh, oh man, I was, uh, uh, and I can't remember how to say it. I was gonna say that you had a small appendage, but anyway. <laughs> now, now, lobster. How how old oh, yeah, are you? Yeah, uh, uh, lobster <laughs> on uh, Chisai Chin Chin. That's it. Anyway. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> how how old are you? What's that? How old are you? I'll be 49 this year. 40, 49? Yeah. Oh, shit. You're a lot older than I thought, man. I thought you yeah. were like my age. No, I'm an old guy. Yeah. So now your father, he was in Nam. Who, mine? Yeah. No, my dad was a damn Coast Guard. He was a puddle pirate. Yeah, my father, he, was, he served in... Um, he, he spent most of his time in the Caribbean, but during, you know, during not, but your father obviously served during them. He what? Your father served during Nam. He was in. No, he was. Um, Nam was over what in 71, technically, or 70? Uh, no, it was 68 through uh, 72, I believe. Yeah, yeah. like it was, it, it, it ended then, but my dad was in, um, he was in. During the time I was born, and he was stationed in, in like uh, some up in the uh, 
Oh, Great Lakes area. I, I want to say the UP, but I think it was like something Harbor, or something up there in Michigan. Yeah, my old man, he used to always work in boatings. He worked in marinas. He had his own marina, you know, back in the days, you know, whatever it was. But how long, I don't know. Well, obviously, you don't know these, you know, Long Island. So, but no, no, I've always wanted to go to New York. Good night, Sonny. Sorry, Kerlin. Uh, see you next time, brother. Thanks for coming in, Amigas. Actually, I can turn this on. You must be talking about Brandon. He's, he's saying good night, sweetheart. Hey, Brandon. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> Make sure this is Okinawa. How does this sound? Okay, it sounds sexy, dude. Say something sexy. It's kind of <laughs> turn me on a little bit. <sighs> Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, let's look at that nipple. Okinawa. Um, you hang out with Mr. Miyagi? Uh, <laughs> I, dated, I dated a girl. Her last name was uh, Miyagi, actually. <laughs> nice. nice. Yeah, it's Sa uh, Sakura uh, Miyagi, which means j uh, Japanese cherry blossom. Nice. I, it was... Um... She was no, she didn't lady, catch flies girl. with her chopsticks. Uh, she wasn't that good. <laughs> anyway, what did you say? She was old, younger, older. I think she was two or three years older than me. Uh huh. But do, now let me ask you: do do they tell you like, oh, don't fraternize too much with the, the locals, or, or they don't give a shit? They don't tell you nothing. Um, no, they don't really say that. Um, the, we do have pretty strict standards that we had to abide by. Um, not too strict. It's nothing crazy, but like we had a, like, what uh, do you mean standards with women? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. They, 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 to, we had to, to send be out in public. And yeah. They were like, that's okay. <laughs> no. Um, like just in general, like we, uh, we had a curfew. We had to be back in at 1am. Uh, yeah. Cause guys want to fight you over there. Right. Isn't that what happened? What are you talking about? The little, the little, the little, Honestly, I had more positivity than I had negativity from the people. Oh, good. good. They, when, especially in like uh, nightlife arena, like whenever I went got to clubs and stuff, they would. I mean, I had guys buy me drinks, and I mean, I don't, you know, but uh, no, no, I had I guys. Know what you mean. Don't worry, I'm not a kid. Like yeah, yeah. I, some people well, in the chat. Uh, are <laughs> So so okay so so you had a good so you didn't have heat with people people weren't like no, no I, I had a, like, <laughs> they weren't like looking to do some kind of kung fu and shit like you know yeah no no I never uh, never had any problem with anyone Brandon Bruce like, Lee you know you've seen Karate Kid Part Two I'm sure of course right? I haven't seen the second <laughs> no oh my god you went to Okinawa you didn't see Karate Kid Part yeah. Two the whole yeah. movie is the whole thing. The guy goes back to his house, and his house isn't there, and the base is there. Yeah, I, I know. I know. I, I, I'm familiar with a lot of the, uh, um, like the story, the storyline. I, I think if I was that. ever to go to Okinawa, I would have done a shitload of fishing because I hear the tuna over there is unbelievable. Now is I know this is kind of weird that I, well, I did go deep sea fishing. I did catch uh, a lot of big tuna. We caught like yeah. four seven that day between all of us. Wow. Oh wait, that with the, that bit, that real deal tuna that they get that they go out like disposed. Yep. Went, went all the way out, and I caught. I mean, I caught one that was about probably like forty five pounds. It's a big old. And don't they have those guys in the boats that they fight you like that? They because those store you never seen that like on Vice News. They have like, um, you know, because you know, like environment, like you know, fish people. They don't want oh the Greenpeace. Like, um, yeah, yeah, you seen that? Like they go yeah, out and they fight yeah. and they where they where they go after you. they go after the the fishing boats that go and yeah. catch sharks and cut their fins off and then throw the sharks back in the water and the sharks can't even swim anymore, so they sink to the bottom of the ocean. Yeah, I know what you're so, talking about. The shark fins. Too. Yeah, they their regulations have changed a lot, and uh, Okinawa is a little bit different. Uh, it's then, very Americanized, is it not? Oh, right. yeah. Yes and no. It depends on where you're at. Like, the island is only 74 miles long and 14 miles wide. Um, but so, like, when you're south or when you're in the mm -hmm. center, you're in, like, that's where all the bases, majority of the bases are. Farther you go north, you're in, like, the country type area. And then the south, you're in the city. And those two areas, now everything's Americanized, um, which, honestly, if you really want to think, like, talk about it. there's a, a lot of things in all over southeast asia that's just super americanized they uh, they they love our culture they really do 
Um, yeah, there's a part. There's a, there's a famous scene too, where they uh, in in Karate Kid Part Two, where they what what are those lobs? So what are those parties like? Those like dances that, like from the 1950s. You know what I'm talking about? Like I don't know. It's hard to say. You know, you've seen Karate Kid too. You know when they're having that party. I, I haven't. I've only seen the one. Uh, the dances in the fifties, like a, like a ball, the swing dance, or um... yeah, like that's the thing. Like people, like you said, like people in Japan, they're fascinated with like nineteen fifties. Oh, culture. they're so fascinated. Japanese people are just all about our culture. Yeah, nineteen fifties, like that era. You know, Elvis Presley. You know that kind of. You know. I don't know, but uh, um, not so much in in my area in like Okinawa. They were more so of like uh, my generation kind of. Uh, bring, I mean, you, you would go to the all the clubs and everything would have, um, like most recent type of music playing. Like you'd have, uh, yeah, like that rap or they, music. Yeah, like they would have like Drake. Um, in Japan. Ugh. Yeah. Yes, and, and they also had. Uh, like I've been to, Jap so when I was in Japan, Vietnam, and Thailand, I was in a bar. Each individual time I've been in a bar and heard "Country Roads" by John Denver, and they love it. Country Roads. Yeah. Listen, that's good. Good thing and it wasn't yeah, Billy Ray Cyrus. Oh yeah, the uh, what's that song? That old time. Thank you for breaking heart. heart. What's that? Don't thank you to understand. <laughs> Billy Ray Cyrus. <laughs> yeah, I, know, I know. Roll, that new one That's a good song, actually. Come on, so you got to work on your redneck voice. My redneck voice? Hmm. You sure got yourself a pretty mouth there, boy. <laughs> <laughs> Squeal like a pig. Mustard and french fried taters. Oh, wait, wait. Hold on. What is that from? I, hold on. That's... uh. Sling blade, he like Billy Bob Thornton, like, mm, yeah, mm -hmm. mm, mm -hmm. I like me some taters, mm, yeah. I'm fixing Is there anybody kick. left in the chat? Who's left in the chat? I can't even see. Yeah, no one said um, anything for, for a little while. We got Myra, we Myra. Sunny already went out. Georgina's hanging. Oh, that's good. Georgina's Tracy's, Tracy's listening or sleeping. Yeah, uh, I like, oh, the listings. <laughs> I talk about Okinawa and Karate Kid. Yeah, we were we were just about to. Uh, we just finished the shipping, didn't I? Didn't do anything. I just sat there and drank beer the whole time. <laughs> All right, there Where's we go. Tommy is Tommy's on here. No, no I, I haven't seen Tommy. I haven't seen him all day. So I've got my both stores are on vacation mode, so don't have to worry about that. Yeah, hey. Wait, but people, is there a way that you could put the whole store on ice, or you can't? Yeah, I just did it. Yeah, he I'll, just I'll did. Put up, put up so you can no, see. I heard that somebody can buy stuff even when you're on vacation mode. You have to click the other setting. So yeah, you're right. Um, they you just have that you then you adjust your you know whatever. But like, uh, yeah, people say that they say, oh, we'll just put ten day handling. Yeah, but guess what? But people. When they see it, they're not gonna. How many times do you ever look at the hand? I mean, look, if it's an item that you don't have to have tomorrow, don't you? Oh, was that to vacation mode? Look at that. You can you so you select you select vacation mode. So like right there, it's off. Nothing, right? Turn on. You select a message. I said sorry for the inconvenience, but we're not accepting orders to March. Thank you for your interest. And then um, you can either put show people the date you'll be back, um, and yeah. then you can just do the the handling. Or you just right here, keep people from buying your fixed price listings while you're on vacation. Your auction sell listings will not so run a schedule. Oh, see. That's a great idea. It says keep people from buying your fixed price. So, okay, so then that you're putting the whole store on ice. Good. Yeah, they, uh, right here. Buyers will not be able to make purchase from the listings. Okay. Good, good. Because I was worried. I always ask people that, and they're like, oh, just change. I says, I don't want to do that because you know what? You know you're gonna get that guy who bought something, and he's gonna be like, "Oh man, you know I didn't really see it," you know. Right. I mean, how many times you, I get people that buy stuff in the middle of the night? They're not looking at the turn. They don't even read the listing. Yeah. Forget about the other bullshit. 
they don't even read the, the, the other stuff that you put in the description. You think they're going to read that you, that you, you know. Yeah, I don't even, I mean, I'm like, uh, me and Lobster were talking about the other day. We, I mean, I, my uh, descriptions, very simple. Like, I, I don't, I don't go into detail mm -hmm. unless it, there certain situations I will, if I feel like I would want to know this information. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, I don't sit there and, and, you know, say the most basic generic things like, uh, you know, like unless it, it just, unless it calls for it. I don't know. Right. So I think what it so is with Amazon, you with, on with, yeah, Amazon with Amazon doing all those, uh, uh, all the listings, the way they do them, where there's very few bits and words of anything going on in there. It's just a picture and a price and, you know, people go to eBay to look for something different and they're expecting the same thing. So I'm not even putting effort into the descriptions anymore. I just, I use the phone and let the phone do it for me. Hey, does anyone, uh, do you want to see me feed the snake? I don't know how many people would, would like that. feed it the cat? Me. No, I've got uh, a frozen mouse that I thought out. Uh, I'm, I'm good with it. Yeah, I'm you're good, good on that. You're good without it? Okay, all right. Some people find it. Some people find it interesting. I don't know. I mean, it is different. They want to We're see a have a mouse roast. Huh? <laughs> they want to see a snake. I don't want to see no damn snake. What if that snake gets out? No, he's, eat you for lunch. He's gonna come and roll up next to the side of you, grilling. She's a baby and she's not venomous. Yeah. How do you know, man? That's what they tell you. At the <laughs> how do I know? Store. That's I'm... what they tell you at the pet store. <laughs> <laughs> They get, hey, yeah, yeah, corona, don't worry about it. It's just, yeah, yeah, it's good. Don't worry about it. That coronavirus started with a snake. Really? Yeah. Somebody ate a snake and that something was bad. No, that's bush meat, dude. That's like, that's, what is that? Spars or SARS, the SARS virus? Wasabi? Uh, I'll be right Wasabi. Y'all just talk about I mean, whatever. I got that information you from the internet, so the internet can't lie things. to me. I don't know why people eat that shit. Why can't they just eat regular food? Oh, like God. what? Chicken? What like, chicken? Oh, come on. What do you got? You got to talk about that show, uh, America uh, Farming. Uh, I know. I used to work with this guy. Every time someone would order chicken, he'd be like, you know, they give the hormones to the chickens and they do. It says, Roberto, shut up about the fucking chicken. We eat chicken. You go eat something else. Go eat pizza. Go eat a bowl of soup. But we're having chicken over here. You know what they put in their chicken? Get the fuck out of here. Why, why are you busting my balls about my chicken right now? I know. This guy, I swear. He's like, oh, I watched this special on the internet. And I said, get the fuck out of here with your fucking Roberto. <laughs> He's like, oh, you know the chickens, they, they can't walk straight. They have food. We all eat. What? I think it was bat soup. I think Myra said it was bat soup because they eat yeah. bats. The bats is on the list. And one yeah, of the things that I was just supposed to eat. What's that? You're not yeah, supposed it... to eat bats. Yeah. <laughs> when I looked Did it Jesus up. Jesus eat I... a bat? He never ate that shit. You know, in those biblical oh, days. Yeah, they fish and bread and drink some wine with his homies. You know? He kept Did they eat like a lamb and they had like a yeah. cow yeah. and a chicken? Yeah, that's it. The, the, the chicken was right there, and he wasn't pumped up. He was probably a skinny chicken too. But <laughs> when I looked still... up the images of the coronavirus, uh, there was the the cat, the bat, and there's another critter, and then it had a camel. So apparently, you can't eat camel either. Or you're gonna get the coronavirus. Yeah, you can't eat that. Come on, well, who doesn't know that? I mean, seriously, I like I the guy. It's not on my menu, dude. I'm not eating any of that stuff. People who eat monkeys and stuff like that. It's like, eat regular food that they give you at the supermarket. I mean, it's, it's yeah. Like, do you have to eat something that's, I mean. I mean, I, I guess know. if you're in a third world country and there isn't much protein going on. And what do you, you, they you don't have plenty, a grocery man. store. In China, they, they got plenty. <laughs> Come on. Yeah, but there's so many people competing for the food. I mean, they're uh, at a point now where they're manufacturing plastic rice and selling it. Um, uh, I hope that's not what they're serving at Chipotle. Because <laughs> that's what I had for dinner tonight. That's a jad, Chipotle? 
yeah, I feel like it's, it's actually a pretty good place healthy. to eat. Yeah, it's I feel like good. for fast food, it's somewhat healthy. Yeah, I just don't like when they when you order the burrito and they put everything on there. They're like they encourage you to put more and more. And by the time you're done with the line of selection, your goddamn thing doesn't even roll up. They have to freaking wrap it up with aluminum foil just to keep it from falling apart. And then when you yeah, go to sit down and open it up and eat, then you're like, I can't pick it up and eat. I gotta eat, I gotta use a fork, a knife. Might as well just got yeah. the goddamn bowl. Yeah, but I got, but, but that's my problem. That's why I'm getting so fat because I love the, the, the you know the the uh, the, the the wrap. So uh, the burrito wrap. They're good. They're good. But now I like they they have the mixed greens. Like yeah. it's like a, it's like you see what they got now. They got like yeah um, yeah yeah yeah. We got one here nearby that I frequently visit. You know, it's like the super greens. You know, whatever super greens, man. But they, you know, they, it's like, uh, like I guess, like a spinach leaf, a kale leaf, uh, some other kind of. You know, I feel like you know I'm eating healthy, even though it's mixed with uh, guacamole and. Uh, yeah, guacamole is healthy though, unless they put sour yeah. cream in it. Yeah, so this way, I feel like I'm eating healthier than if I eat. You know, forget about McDonald's. You know, that's the worst. Or uh, what's the other one? See, in this little neighborhood I go in, they have that. I got that. I have uh, Five Guys Burgers, which is like so much salt. They just go. Uh, only the chips are salty. That's a that's a little salty at the at the at the Chipotle, uh, but they're delish. Yeah. I like but I gotta it. lose weight. I'm getting too heavy, man. I'm look at this. I'm like, I feel so bloated. Yeah, you gotta eat more gotta greens. Eat. Yeah, I gotta yeah. eat less carbs. Yeah. Every time, every time I don't eat carbs, the weight just like falls it goes right away off. eventually. Yeah, I do. I do away with um, for a period of time, I'll do away with soda and bread and yeah. and pasta, and I, I notice a change in how I feel. Yeah. The, the minute I go back to drink my ginger ale, my my joints start to ache. I get yeah. I get my my you know hands get tight. It's tough. Yeah, and that's what happened. I'm getting my tendons. I just I picked up a few dumbbells. My wrist was messed up. My form. I, I was like, forget it. I was like, oh my god. Hit I hit hitting forty. You feel different, you know. Yeah. Well, now you get, get to fifty. <laughs> Yeah, I was 50, dude. You're hitting 50, man. I just hit 40. Oh, shit. Yeah. All right, I got, I got to go to bed, man. It's 4 a.m. over here. And, yeah, and I know. It's getting I, late. And I'm getting cold, and I need to go to bed myself. I got to get up in the morning. What are you early. talking about? I thought you said you were in San Diego. I know. It's 1230. I got to get up in like four hours. Well, I think you said it's cold. I'm like, I didn't even think it's it cold. It is cold. I can, feel, I can feel the breeze hitting my back. I'm what, like 70 degrees? Was it like 70? No, 65? it's probably like 60 something right now. Yeah, it's 60 my ass. It's chilly it's right now, dude. It's 12 30 at night. It's chilly. I'll ask. It's so funny because we have all these people from UK, you know, watching the channels, you know, American channels and everything. Yeah. And they're so, uh, they're enamored with this weather from Southern California. I mean, everybody's like, oh my God. You know, because when you're, I mean, in the UK, the weather sucks. So, yeah. When yeah, you see, cool. like, yeah, when you see, like, you know, somebody in, you know, Los Angeles, yeah. let, you know, it's always good. Yeah, I just made a video the other day. Of, it was on Sunday. I sold a kayak and uh, the beach was behind me, and I got so many comments from it because of the, of the background. It's like, yeah, it's so get the content. I love the beach. I'm like, hey, good. I'm glad it worked out for you. Yeah, but it just seems like, and also the people that are from Australia, watching, it just seems like it's just way too hot in Australia. Oh, yeah. Like, like yeah. these people are talking like 100 degrees. You see the one guy, what's his name? I forgot his name. He's always like in a pool of sweat. And, and I'm like, man, uh, <laughs> what, they don't have air conditioning in Australia? The guy is like, literally, it's like, Profusely sweating. It's like, 
you're making me feel uncomfortable just watching your video because you're like I feel like I like, need to go jog or something just to be at the same speed. Yeah, yeah. man. No, uh, you gotta go go take a shower or something, man. You look like, <laughs> like what like what's the matter? You know? I don't know, man. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna check out. I'll talk to you. All right, bud. I'll see you later. Good chatting with you, dude. Tell the kid always say goodbye. Yeah, I will. All right, dude. Later. (sighs) What do you jump off? Yeah, he's gonna go to bed, dude. It's like like four something or something like that. Well, he's on the same uh, time zone as you. Yeah, I mean, I'm, but I've got to stay up. Uh, shoot. honestly, I probably should get off. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, because you got to get going. All right, brother. Well, have a safe trip, my man. And uh, yeah. shoot me a text or something. Let me know that you got there safe. Yeah, let we can. Know. Yeah, when we can do a live or something. Uh, when I'm there, sometime maybe. So. Yeah. You can show us your uh, skiing skills. Oh my goodness, I'm gonna suck. <laughs> you already suck. We already know that. Yeah, but <laughs> I get. I get paid for that. Um, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> all right, bro. Well, make yeah. sure you, uh, get all your packages out. And then I would, I would just cancel that order on that, uh, other deal. Yeah. Before you leave, don't forget. Tell so Justice said hi, and I'll see you when you get back or, and I'll talk to you soon. Yeah. Uh, thanks everyone, uh, in the chat for coming and hanging out. It's a lot of the same people. It's good. It's our homies. So, uh, and uh, if you're not already subscribed to Lobster, I got a his uh, link to his channel down in the description. Yeah, I was just so. looking at that. I've got five more subs before I hit the 300. Good so, stuff. Let's awesome. get the 300. That's awesome. It's going to be a giveaway on that, by the way. Oh, All yeah? right, brother. Yeah. I'm going to send pictures of your ass. Perfect. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Hope you make some money off of it. I sure can't anymore. Oh, jeez. All right, brother. I'm going to go, and I will see you next time. All righty, then. All right, dude. Peace. See y'all.